I was in the gym yesterday getting a solid bicep pump, and a guy came up to me asking me if I was just putting Singh from Minority Mindset. I said yes. We started talking. Really cool young guy. He was telling me that his family's involved in the real estate business. They own a bunch of commercial buildings around the area, and that he got involved with the vending machine business, and he's trying to figure out what to do. And I said, what's your goal? Like, what do you want to see? He says, I want to go out and start generating passive income. And I said, why do you want passive income? And he said, I want to have this type of financial freedom. That's when I went on to ask him his age. I said, how old are you? He said, I'm 23. And I said, you know, that's a great goal to generate passive income. But I want you to really think about what it is that you want. Because if you go out and you start working to generate passive income right now, meaning you work to earn money to buy these assets, you might get a 7, maybe an 8, maybe a 10% return on your money if you're lucky. But if you work right now to go out and generate more money, if you go out right now and you work to build income, well, then you can take the income that you build and go out and generate the passive income in the future. Because if you focus on your income right now, if you focus on earning more money, if you can build something that's worth a million dollars, five million dollars, ten million dollars, a hundred million dollars, well, now you can take this money that you earned because you worked to build the income first and then use the income to buy the passive income. Because right now, if you're making $50,000 a year and your goal is passive income, well, there's a limit to how much passive income that you get. Because remember, passive income, this cash flow that people like to call passive income, that's a byproduct of how much income you put in. If you put in $10,000 and you get a 10% return, that's $1,000. And by 10% return, I mean 10% cash flow. If you put in $100,000, that's $10,000 of cash flow. But if you put in a million dollars, that's $100,000 worth of cash flow. If you want to increase how much passive income you get, you can do one of two things. One, you can invest in riskier places to get a higher cash flow. Or number two, you can invest more money to get more cash flow. Now, even if you invest in riskier places, there's going to be a cap on how much cash flow that you can get. In the real estate game, if you're investing in high cash flowing areas, 7 to 10% is pretty fair. I mean, 10% is definitely on the higher end, but 7 to 10% is fair. So if you invest $100,000, you might be able to get $10,000 a year in cash flow. That's not a lot of cash flow for you to be able to fund your life. You're going to have to invest a million dollars to generate that $100,000 with the cash flow with a 10% return. And again, now I'm talking about the higher ends of returns. If you can only get a 5% return, you're getting only $50,000 with the cash flow from a million dollar investment. Now, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be investing for cash flow because if you don't want to go out and create something, build an income, and you just want to work your job and slowly build the cash flow on the side, that's fine. For the average person, that is the best way to build wealth. Earn money from your job, take a piece of that income, put it into something like a dividend-paying ETF. That is a great way to generate cash flow for the average person, and most people will never get that far. But if you really, really want to build wealth, and I'm saying this because the guy that I was talking to was a real hustler. I mean, he was like really involved with a lot of different businesses. He's trying to build companies. He wants to be an entrepreneur because he said that he wants to generate passive income. And that's when I really started questioning him, what does he really want to do? Because if you really want that financial freedom and you want a lot of passive income because he made it seem like he wants to have all the nice things, I meaning you're going to need a lot of passive income, you're going to need a lot of money. And if you need a lot of money, you're going to have to go out and create something. That means go out and build something. See, the saying is it takes money to make money, but that's kind of a misconception because the reality is it doesn't take money to make money. It takes hustle to make money. It takes money to grow your money which means if you want to generate cash flow or passive income, it takes money to do that. It takes money to go out and buy rental properties. It takes money to go out and buy dividend-paying stocks or dividend-paying ETFs. It takes money to do that. But if you want to go out and create something, if you want to go out and start a business, if you want to go out and build an income, it doesn't take money to do that. It takes hustle. It takes drive. It takes commitment. It takes risk. And then as you start generating money, that's when you can take the money that you're earning and reinvest it back into the company. Now, what is this business that you can create? Well, I don't know. Anybody can have a good business idea. There was somebody who made a lot of money creating mugs. There was somebody who made a lot of money creating microphones like this. There's somebody who made a lot of money creating pens. There was somebody that made a lot of money creating notebooks. There's people that made a lot of money doing a lot of different things. You just have to figure out what's the right business model for you. Is it selling something on the internet? Is it selling a service? Is it selling education? Is it selling some sort of physical product? What is the value that you can create? 
And if you can work to create this thing that can generate you more income, now you can take this more income that you have and use it to generate that cash flow, that passive income. And this is where you have to get it beat through your head that if you want to generate more passive income, if you want to generate more cash flow, you need more money to invest. Where do you get this more money? Well, this is where it's going to really depend on you. And if you really, really, really want to make more money, you are going to have to create something. There's a limit to how much money you can make by working for somebody else. Period. But not everybody has it in them to go out and create something. So if you're working for somebody else, and you're not happy with how much money you're making, you got to ask yourself, is there a way for you to earn more money in the career and the position that you're in right now? If yes, then go pursue that. If no, and you're still unhappy with how much money you're earning, what can you do to earn more money? Now, there are ways to do this through a job. You get a career change. Go and get a certificate. Go and get better experiences. That way you can earn more money. But there's always going to be a cap unless you're getting paid with equity or you're getting paid with stock options. I mean, that's a whole different thing, but now you're not getting paid a salary. You're getting paid in ownership, right? Equity is different than salary. Salary is a check that you get for doing something. Salary is a check that you get for going to your work. Equity is now you're getting a piece of the profits. That's where wealth is built. And this equity is something that you can either go out and create because you went out and built a business or it's something that you can purchase. You can go out and buy equity in a company. You can buy equity in the Amazon company by buying shares in that company. Or you can earn that company if you work for a company that's paying out equity. But that's a whole different risk because now if you work for a company that's giving you equity and the company never sells and never gets acquired or goes bankrupt, well, now not only didn't you get your full salary, but now you lost the ability to earn more money. So you take on a lot of risk if you're getting paid with equity. Not that it's necessarily a bad thing. Some people have made a ton of money doing that, but some people have also lost a lot by betting on their company becoming a whole lot more valuable. So if your goal is cash flow, which I like cash flow, the more money you invest, the more cash flow that you can get. If you want a lot of cash flow, if you want a lot of passive income, that way you have a lot of cash flow coming in to fund your lifestyle, you need a lot of money to invest. If you need a lot of money to invest, right now is a time for you to go out and earn more money, especially if you're young, especially if that's what you want to achieve, especially if you have the risk tolerance, especially if you have the drive, then you have to focus on earning more money. Now, where do you start? There's a ton of resources for free on YouTube. Start reading books about how to build a business. Start reading books about how to innovate. Start reading books about how to manage employees and start creating something. You don't have to have the perfect business idea first. I started a lot of different businesses, which some of them made money. Some of them didn't do so well. You have to be willing to start each thing that you do is going to teach you something, whether it's good or bad. But in order for you to learn something, you have to actually do something. And this is where so many people get caught up. Just like how when you try to pick the perfect investment, people get stuck and they don't make an investment. People who want to make a lot of money get stuck in this idea of, I don't know what to do. And so they don't do anything. Now, you should not go out and start a business with the goal of just making money. Making money is a byproduct. And the reason why so many people who just chase money don't get it or don't feel any sort of fulfillment is because they did it all for the wrong reasons. And I can tell you this from experience because when I was doing the event planning company, I did it just to chase money. And I can tell you that because I didn't know any better at the time. I was fresh into college. I was working in the event planning company when I was in high school. That was an opportunity for me when I got into college. I wasn't into partying. I wasn't into drinking. I don't drink. I never drink. I don't smoke. That's not what I do. But I became one of the biggest party promoters on campus because that was what was accessible. By the end of my college career, even though I had built such a good name, I had contracts with the biggest clubs on campus to do every week parties. I shut it down because I hated it. I hated being around that environment. And so you can chase money and you'll get money, but you're going to feel no fulfillment and you're going to have no drive to want to take it further. And so if you really want to achieve that success, you got to chase the value. What value can you provide that nobody else can that way now you can, one, change the world through your product, but then also as a byproduct of the value that you provide, you can make some money because money is a byproduct of value. The more people you can help, the more people you can impact, 
the more services that you can provide, the bigger the service that you can provide, the more money that you're going to be able to make. But it starts with you doing something and creating something. And then you're going to learn about so many different processes along the way. You're going to learn how to sell. You're going to learn how to market. You're going to learn how to manage people. You're going to learn how to email people and use technologies. There's a lot of things that you're going to learn and you can't know all of it going into it, but you have to start. And this is where now go, it goes back to that question. What is your goal? If your goal is cash flow, fine. How much cash flow do you need? Now you can run the numbers. If you can generate a 7% return on your money, how much cash do you need? If it's $70,000 a year, you need a million dollars invested. Okay, you can do that over the course of your career, but if you want to do that by the time you're 30 or by the time you're 40 or by the time you're 50, now you got to work backwards. How many years do you have until you hit that age? How much money do you have to invest every single year? Can you do it with the income that you have right now? Maybe you got to spend less money. If you can't do it by spending less money and you need to earn more money, now how do you earn more money? Can you do it through your job or are you going to have to create something? How much value can you provide? And again, some people have that entrepreneurial bug where you cannot work for somebody else that you have to create something. Some people don't. Some people have to work for somebody else because they don't have the risk tolerance, they don't have the discipline, they don't have the interest, they don't have the ability or whatever else to go out and create something. There's nothing wrong with working for a company. There's nothing wrong with being an entrepreneur. They're just different skill sets. And you have to find the right skill set for you. That way you can work to earn money for the right reasons. Because if your goal is financial freedom, what kind of financial freedom do you want? Is it cash flow or is it asset values? Now, there's three different aspects of money that we just talked about. We talked about managing money. We talked about making money. And we talked about saving money. Now, this is where a lot of people get the order of operations wrong. Most people think that the first thing you have to be able to do is know how to make money. And then once you know how to make money, you got to know how to save money. Then once you know how to save money, you have to know how to manage money. When in reality, the first thing that you need to know how to do is you need to know how to manage the money that you earn. And the reason why I say this is that there are so many people in America that are earning their six-figure salaries that are broke. People that are earning $100,000 a year, broke. People that are earning $250,000 a year that are broke. Actually, statistically, the majority of people that are earning six figures a year are still broke. It's not because they're not earning enough money. It's because they don't know how to manage the money. And most people assume that the solution to their financial problems is just earning more money. But statistically, when the majority of people earn more money, they dig themselves into a bigger financial hole because when you earn more money, banks look at you and say, oh, you're even more credit worthy. Here's a bigger line of credit to buy a car. Here's a bigger credit card line of credit. That way now you have the ability to spend more money. That's what the first thing you have to do is you got to know how to manage your money. Then you need to know how to make more money. Because now once you know the system of how do you spend money, how do you invest money, and how do you save money, this is where now knowing how to grow that income becomes so important. It goes back to the 75, 15, 10 plan that I talk about, where for every dollar that you earn, 75 cents is the maximum that you spend. 15 cents is the minimum that you invest. 10 cents is the minimum that you save. If you want to amplify how much money you're investing, that way you can buy more cash flow, that way you can own more assets, you have to know how to earn more money. And now it's important to understand you're earning more money after you know how to manage your money because now when you earn more money, you have more money to invest, you have more money to save, and you have more money to spend. And that's where now knowing how to save your money strategically comes into place because people get worried about saving their money before they even have any money, before they have any assets. But you have to know how to earn the money and then you have to know how to manage the money. These are things that you have to know that way you can actually take care of your wealth and focus on the right things when it comes to building your money. And going back to that topic of building something and creating something on your own, if you go out and build something and create something on your own, the risk is again that you can lose it all. And so high risk, high potential return. And you have to remember that with high risk, that also means that you can lose everything. And that's what happens to a lot of people. And right now we're seeing the economy slow down. And as the economy slows down, we see more bankruptcies happen. That means people who were building something, creating something, invested their life savings into something, invested all their time into something, lose not only their job, but every dollar that they invested into this asset that they hoped would have been worth a whole lot more money, which is where understanding that not everybody is cut out to take that risk because when the tide goes out, you see who's been swimming naked and it's very easy to then lose it all 
when you don't know how to manage or create or sustain what it is that you're building. And that's one of the reasons why now I'm working to build Briefs Media, my financial newsletter company, because I want to build something different. I did the real estate thing. I love it. But I want to now work to create something and change the way that media is consumed. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Briefs Media, we have a free newsletter called Market Briefs. It is a newsletter you can read in five minutes or less every morning. It's a breakdown of what's happening in things like the housing market, the stock market, the crypto market, the global economy, and our own economy. It's a super fun read, and I promise you, you're going to be a lot smarter after reading it with just five minutes every morning, and it's completely free. So if you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, I got the link to hike and join down in the description below. Retirement used to be known as a three-legged stool, where one leg was your pension you got from your company, a second leg was the social security you got from the government, and the third leg was your own personal savings or your investments. Well, now what we're seeing happen is that pensions have become a thing of the past because companies don't offer pensions anymore, social 